Ducati Scrambler Night Shift is new for 2021 and I think it presents a potential predicament for anyone that was thinking of buying the Icon this year. It's such a great looking bike that it must be super tempting to spend the extra cash. So in this video, I'll go through the specs, I'll talk about where they're similar and where they're different, then I'll give you three reasons to buy the Icon, three to buy the Night Shift and I'll wrap up with which one I would pick myself. But before we get started, a massive thanks to M&P Ducati down here in Cardiff for lending me their demo bike to film with today. It's an awesome shop, they've got great staff and some of the best roads in the UK on the doorstep. So if you want to try the latest and greatest from Ducati, then don't hesitate to visit the link in the description. So let me run you through the specs on these two bikes because the fundamentals are extremely similar, but there are some specific changes to the night shift that really transform how it rides. The centerpiece for both bikes though is that 803cc air-cooled L-Twin. It's such a lovely engine. The fact that the rest of the bike is pretty simple really means that it comes to the forefront when you're riding it. It's not super powerful at the top end, but it does have some nice torque in the mid-range, and it's just one of those engines where you really feel like you can give the bike a good pasting on the road, and you're not getting up to those speeds where you're gonna lose your license or your physical well-being. It really does have a lovely exhaust note, especially the night shift I've noticed, and also a really nice meaty bassy sound when you're off the throttle decelerating. Now the engine is suspended from this lovely looking steel trellis frame that gives it a bit of that Ducati flair, and I also think the swing arm's got a nice distinctive banana shape to it as well. Suspension wise you've got an upside down fork at the front and then a mono shock off to one side at the rear. There's no adjustability apart from preloading the shock so you can set the sag for a passenger or with luggage but if you do want to change the damping to suit your riding style if you really want to push the bike a bit you might be better off looking up the range at the Scrambler 1100s. That said the way it's set up for an average rider is perfectly fine for road riding. It's slightly on the soft side but if you are doing back lanes and rougher surfaces and a bit of gravel like the Scrambler will tempt you to do so, then it is appropriately set up. Now it's not a super heavy bike, it's fairly slender and lightweight, so Ducati have opted to put a single disc at the front. Helps keep the cost down as well, I guess. But if you do just have one brake at the front on a bike that does encourage you to ride it a little bit hard, then you want it to be a good one. And the good news is it's a full pop Brembo radially mounted monoblock caliper on a decent sized disc. With the Brembo Master Cylinder, it's a nice setup there's plenty of power it's not got the huge initial bike but as you squeeze it on there's more than enough power for this kind of bike it's also worth adding that you get an adjustable brake lever on both bikes and also because it's a hydraulic clutch and you've got a Brembo master cylinder as well it's the same setup so adjustable clutch and brake levers on a bike at this price point is quite a nice feature to give it a bit of that scrambler retro look you've got an 18 inch diameter wheel at the front and then a 17 at the rear on both bikes and they also share the same tires so Pirelli MT60s that's sort of a flat track style tyre so mainly road focused but you could do a little bit of light off-roading with them if you so wish. From an electronics perspective these bikes are super simple and like I say that really allows you to focus on the good mechanical points of it when you ride it. It's the sort of bike you just hop on, ride and forget about rider aids and all that kind of thing and just take in the ride and the scenery. For me that's exactly how a retro bike should be. It's got an LCD dash set off to one side in that round shape. It doesn't really show you anything particularly fancy you can scroll through and get fuel range a couple of trip meters air temp revs and speed and gear of course but there's no fancy phone connectivity or anything like that now surprisingly it does get lean sensitive ABS owing to a six axis IMU so that's not something you're used to seeing on a bike at this price in this sort of retro category but definitely a nice safety feature if you do ride in the rain and it's kind of just working in the background there's no rider modes or other prominent rider aids it's just some good safety features underneath a retro package. So all those points, the fundamentals are the same for the two bikes. So where does the night shift differ? I mean, the most obvious thing is the appearance and the aesthetics. It's a cracking looking bike. Lots of little touches that almost give it that custom feel. Firstly, you've got spoke wheels with black rims. I think they look absolutely perfect on this bike. There's a shorter front mudguard, a black headlight bezel. These indicators are from the Scrambler accessory catalog. They're quite pricey. I think they're about 300 quid, but they're standard on this bike and they really do suit it. And then you've got this paint job. I love the fact that it's kind of matched so you don't have the separate side panels like on the Icon. I mean, that's a classic look for that bike, but it really does give this one a different feel and it makes it look a bit more continuous. And then that's matched on these number boards on the side. At the rear, they've done away with the rear mudguard to give it a shorter look. 
you've got this bench style seat it's really very similar in terms of like cushiness and shape there's plenty of space at the back for a passenger but it does give it that sort of custom look and last up you've got this twin exhaust that looks like the one off the desert sled i think it actually sounds a little bit better as well so just have a listen and see what you think But the biggest difference between these two bikes, hands down, is the handlebars. Honestly, changing the handlebars on the bike is like the single biggest thing you can do to change the character of it on the road. Cardiff Harley-Davidson is one of the other shops owned by the M&P Group. It's just around the corner. And look at the Softail lineup. I mean, it's pretty much the same engine and chassis. But the difference between one of those bikes with flat bars versus mini apes and that kind of thing, you know, it can go from a sporty cruiser right to a very laid back position. And another example would be the Triumph Bobber and Speedman which I did a review of the other day, back-to-back -back comparison. Again, totally different on the road, and the biggest difference is the bars, and it's the same story with these two bikes. On the Icon, you sat up very high. They really are very high pulled back bars. The night shift gets you over the front a little bit more, and it really puts you in that position where you feel like you can attack a bit on a twisty road. It's a much more road-focused position. The Icon is easier going, and it'll probably make for a better bike in the standing position if you are doing off-roading. So with that, here are three reasons to buy the Icon. The first being the price. It's a little bit more affordable than the night shift, so if the cost is a major factor for you, then it makes for the obvious choice. Also, you can get this in the dark edition, which is the most affordable Ducati in the whole lineup. If you're going to go and customize it anyway and have it painted, you may as well go for that option. Secondly, the styling. I mean, the original Ducati Scrambler that inspired this whole lineup, it looks closer to the Icon than it does the night shift especially in the yellow finish. I think you can get this one in yellow, orange, and red, but typically you see that original Scrambler in yellow. You know, it really does have more of that feel. So if the heritage of the bike is important to you, again, go for the Icon. Lastly, those bars. I think it gives it a little bit more versatility. So if you're commuting and you wanna be sat upright, if you're gonna be doing a little bit of light off-roading and you wanna get out the saddle, this bike's gonna make a better choice because really that flat bar setup is much more road focused. This is never gonna be your first choice for proper off-roading but it can do it have a look at a channel like moto geo he shows what can be done on the scrambler icon on the 800 and it is actually quite impressive it's just a cool looking bike that can do a bit of everything as for the night shift well this is the one that certainly wants to hustle and push a bit more competitors for this bike are probably like the husvana vip pillen 701 maybe even something like the triumph trident it's not quite as performance orientated as that bike but if you've got your heart set on a ducati scrambler and realistically you do most of your riding on the road this would be a great choice secondly the aesthetics as i've said it's a huge factor on this bike it's a really beautiful looking thing for me it would be ideal if you wanted something that looked a bit custom but you really didn't have the time or money to invest in it it looks like it could be on display at the bike shed and a couple more little tweaks here and there would really make it into a proper custom looking bike third one would be the sound it's just that little bit more meaty than the one on the icon This could be irrelevant if you're gonna fit an aftermarket pipe, but that can be quite expensive. So if you want the best sounding bike out of the dealer, the night shift has it for me. So look, each bike certainly has its own strengths. And I think on the way over here, I'd have probably picked the night shift. I've had it for about a week. Every single ride, it's been putting a big grin on my face. I've been loving sort of rinsing it around the back roads in the men dips. But riding this today, that handlebar position, the looks of it as well, and the price, it's just a little bit more versatile and comfy with that upright position. If you found a bit of a gravel road or green lane, you'd definitely be tempted to have a stab on this bike. So yeah, I think it's the icon for me.